Wild fans, special guest joining me today. His name is Matthew Richard Bartkowski, the big time blue liner. How are you, buddy? Very good, Joseph Patrick. How are you? Well, it's close enough, but uh, I'm doing Patrick, well. Or is it Paul? It's Paul, but you know Kyle Rao would always call me Joseph Peter. Peter. That's so it. Peter is the one I was thinking of. Patrick's actually my confirmation name. But anyway, all right. So, um, how are the family and kids? Uh, they're great. Uh, <laughs> as good as they can be with being cooped up in the house every day, I guess. But uh, try and find different stuff to do. But it's getting tough. <laughs> yeah, you know how it is. Outdoor wise, uh, what have you guys been up to? I know you you like to be outside when you can and the yard doing those sorts of things. Uh, not not a whole lot. I mean, there's a little playground across the street from us, so when nobody's there, we go over and let them play. Uh, yard, nothing. Getting a patio put in, but I'm not doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh uh, that's about it. How have you been staying busy? I've uh, been just building furniture, really. Uh, finished the mudroom for my wife, and right now, I'm actually doing it right now. I'm building a console table for behind the sofa. Cool. Um, listen, and don't take this the wrong way. Have you been keeping up with your hygiene? A lot of people aren't uh, <laughs> shaving or... Uh, clearly I haven't been shaving and I haven't, I wanted to get a haircut and I missed my window on that one. Uh, but yeah, I've been showering, uh, at least once a day. <laughs> Do you trust your wife? Do you trust your wife, Jesse, to cut your hair? No, not at all. I'd shave it myself before I'd have her do it. There's, there's no chance. Uh, you've never been a guy that's big on waiting around. You're not a very patient person. Where does that come from? <laughs> well, I think it depends on what we're talking about here. But, <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea. Uh, I've just always been active or hyperactive, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. Yeah, waiting around is not my talent. Enlighten our fans on the staff member you enjoy chirping the most other than me. Oh, other than you. Jeez. Uh, I... Uh, either Massa or Brett. Brett, but it's yeah. Not, it's, yeah, it's not really chirping when I chirp Brett. It's just more like friendly banter. We just kind of yeah. give it to each other a little bit. I was going to ask you about that relationship with your uh, defensive coach, if you will, running the blue line this year. Uh, been with the organization a couple of years now. You've known him over two years, but last year Coach McLean ran the defense. How was that? Or this I, year, I should say, since we're still yeah. technically suspended. Yeah. Uh, I'd say, uh, well, it's, it's been great. Um, it's, it's new for him is what he came in and told me. So he was, you know, expecting to learn a lot, which I don't know how he expected that out of our group, but, <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's been good. Um, yeah, like, like I said, he's pretty receptive, um, to an extent, you know, he still is the coach, but definitely receptive just because he is a first year D coach. So it, it, you know, stuff that he may not know just from not playing defense. He'll listen to us. And then uh, as far as him coaching us, I think it's been great. He's, uh, uh, I mean, he's defensive minded, so um, he knows the game really well. And uh, there's a lot that I learned from him, and I'm, I'm sure especially the younger guys did. So I think it's been a really good relationship. What do you miss the most about Brennan Manel not being around the last few weeks? <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> uh, uh, it's pretty fun coming to the rink and seeing him every day. Uh, his normally <laughs> on practice days, pretty drab mood. <laughs> and uh, he he likes to complain a little bit like I do. So we always found common ground there. So <laughs> yeah. whatever, his uh, gripe, whatever his gripes were, that's what I miss the most. <laughs> Have you talked much with Kyle Rao, another guy I know uh, you're particularly close with? <laughs> yeah, I've talked to Rhonda uh, a little bit here and there. Uh, I think he ended up going back home. He was uncertain of whether or not he was going to stay or go home, but I think he went home. And, uh, yeah, he's probably doing nothing, just watching people do things on TV, probably watching Twitch or something like that. I, I don't know. <laughs> um 
when you were growing up, who was a big influence on you getting into the game of hockey? I, I don't really know, if, not really a personal influence, but just growing up in Pittsburgh um, and having Lemieux mainly as, you know, the well, that the best player at that time playing for the Pens, and then they had Yager and they had some good teams. Um, you know, when I could first start remembering hockey, I don't really remember their first Cups, but remembering hockey, they had some really good teams. So, uh just watching that and then you know my parents were always supportive of you know taking me to hockey or whatever I wanted to do so that's kind of just how it started how long have you been playing defense did you start as a forward or in goal uh no I started as a forward I played center till oh uh, I think sixth grade I switched to D and just D ever since never feel a goal. never ever feel- Feel bad for the defenseman that had to try and contain the likes of Lemieux and Yager, et cetera? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it, – especially in Yager's prime. I mean, I, I got to play with him on two separate teams. And, you know, he wasn't his prime, but he was still a handful. So I can only imagine back then when, you know, he was by far the best player how, how tough it would have been. And Lemieux is a whole other animal, so. Yeah. Was Yager the hardest working guy, as all the stories indicate? I mean, you don't really see it a lot just because when, whenever he does it, like he was on an opposite schedule. So he'd sleep during most of the day and he'd be up during most of the night because he thought since you play games at night, he should cycle his body that way. So sometimes he wouldn't come to practice and he'd skate at midnight or 1 a.m. and he'd work out then. Um, but I, I do know whenever he was around the rink, yeah, he was always – doing something whatever it may be or however weird it was he was always doing something so yeah i mean can you imagine if this scenario plays out can you imagine hockey without fans ah oh that's a tough one i mean uh but it kind of i can't no not i mean not really it, it'd be a lot different just uh You'd, you'd hear a lot more of the other team and just the echoing and, and stuff like that. I mean, we've all played places where there's a few fans, but nothing without any fans. Sure. So I, it, it'd, be, it'd be definitely an adjustment. Uh, last thing I'll leave you with is your love of country music, what you've been listening to lately, maybe some concerts you're hoping to see in, uh, in the future. Uh, well, I'd still listen to the older 80s and 90s stuff. There's a good station in Pittsburgh that has all older 80s and 90s, so that. Uh, I don't get a lot of the new stuff during the summer because I'm not along, around the locker room, and the, the younger guys don't really play that, so I have no idea what's come out in the last month and a half. Uh, concerts? Uh, I didn't really have any plan, but I always try and go to Zach Brown. If he comes to Pittsburgh, he puts on a good show. Uh, Kenny Chesney's always a big one, and uh, I like Toby Keith, but he hasn't been around for a few years. So I'm very, uh, I should say, I guess, pleasantly surprised at how well you received this uh, opportunity. The fact you're willing to be on social media is also noteworthy. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's only because it's you, Joe. Anybody right. else I would have turned down. <laughs> I appreciate that. Bart, take, uh, take care of yourself. Tell the family we said hey. I never got to ask you how you're doing. I'm great. Thanks for asking. I know you you don't care. Well, has your wife been giving you chores and stuff around the house while she's woodworking like I am, or what's been going on? True, to some extent. I found my own chores to do. Today I was cleaning windowsills. Oh, that's a pain. I pay somebody to do that. That's a manly thing, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks for doing this, buddy. Take care of yourself. Good, good. Thanks, good. All right, Wild fans, hope you enjoyed the conversation with Matt Barkowski. Till next time, stay safe, keep it real.